So it's been a little bit since we've seen the Star Wars build, the Rebel themed build. Um, we'll do a little bit of work on it today. And then I have some unfortunate bad news about all this, which is typically how things seem to go for me lately. So let's, uh, let's just get right into it. So there's a lot of little things that need to be done before I can start airbrushing on this, but I wanna get to that stage because um, the airbrushing is what I'm gonna enjoy the most. Um, first and foremost too, this top piece right here, the 3D printed piece, um, a follower of mine had reached out and gave us a model of a pretty neat, like kind of an angular one that he had made. But I'm gonna keep this one on here only because I think with how square the rest of the build is, having this really sleek angular one wouldn't match the theme because it's, it's almost too nice. But you remember I said I was building this for DreamHack. Well, DreamHack was canceled. There's no surprise there, especially with everything obviously ramping up again. So um, DreamHack in February was canceled, which was the whole point of this build, but because I've started it, I can't let this become another one where you guys just all complain that Jay didn't finish the build, and I wanna finish this build. This build's actually a lot of fun. But before I can get to the airbrushing phase, which will really bring out the depth and the detail inside this thing, um, I, I technically don't even need to build the computer yet because the computer itself is independent of all of the modding. I need to get a power switch on here. Um, I don't think I'm gonna use the one that came with it, because remember, this one on the top, it's got the power button, it's got a USB 3, um, a USB-C, and a headphone jack. I never use front side anything for this sort of stuff. But yeah, I was thinking about doing the rest of the, like putting some components in here, but again, the motherboard's already in here. There's not a lot to actually have to do to build this computer. And since I can just take all of the case modding parts off, the entire build, like the computer components themselves, are independent. I kind of want to see where certain things line up though. I had to put the riser cable back in here. They sent me the new, the updated one. I didn't actually have the updated one for the H1, the one that's been uh, apparently repaired for the short circuit fire issues that the H1s had in their early revisions. Um, I need to take my water block off of here. That is the Jace Two Cents water block in conjunction with Corsair. That's actually going to be launching here very soon. So stay tuned for that because I am going back to the AIO, as I said. A custom water loop in that system would have been bonkers, but also would have been almost entirely externally mounted. And I just didn't want to do that. Okay, so this is the new riser cable. That's got the grounding holes and the little brass or copper, or whatever that is, liner around it to keep it from grounding out. I know it's kind of boring for the viewer for us to have like a video like this that is, you know, multiple parts like this but it's a heck of a lot less stressful for us to not have to try and rush it, if you will. It's relaxing to be able to build, this is like a passion build, especially when I'm doing these mods and stuff. That way I don't have to worry about, okay, I've gotta get this done and I've gotta cut these corners or whatever. I cut corners anyway, but I gotta get it done and there's a timeline. The only timeline was gonna be February for DreamHack and since that was canceled, that's no big deal now. I wanna take some time with the airbrushing on this and I kinda of want all the airbrushing like in the last video to be done in one video. Just kinda of prep everything up until that point so that way you can focus on all the airbrushing at once. Yep, and this is the final, this is the final thing needed to make that happen because I've gotta account for all the, like I gotta get the power button in there and that's the last bit. I don't think I'm gonna add more to this. This is already starting to look kinda of cheesy as far as I'm concerned. It's definitely gonna be a Star Wars theme. Once we get the, the emblems made with a crew cut. Um, remember, I wanna put airbrush on here. I wanna have like a, maybe on this side, like under here, like caution hot, but in like Arabish, right? And then some stuff on the sides, cause that's what really tied it together. I wonder how many people have actually taken the time to translate this. This does translate into stuff. Um, same thing with right here on the front. Remember, part of the issue with putting a big graphics card in here was the fact that I couldn't clear the buttons, but I handled that, didn't I? There are more buttons going there. I just gotta make sure that the power supply the X PCI Express cables will fit here because the tall graphics card creates an issue with hitting this, this wall right here. So uh, we'll just start with something simple. I mean, just a, a little old 3080 Ti, nothing special. It's gonna fit in here. Is this, actually, is this card actually gonna be too big? Like this is the tough, so I wasn't sure. Oh. Kind of tough oh. to fit in. Yeah, it's because the card like it's this piece right here. This is what's stopping it from going. <sighs> I guess just get the 3080 Ti for the win. We'll try that one. All right, so I think the for the win card actually does fit in here because it had that taller piece. Let's see. Oh, no, that's right. This one doesn't fit because of the overhang of the lips part, right? 
Or do I have to... Oh wait, no wait, there we go, there we go. Why are you guys being so immature and giggling when I said lips overhanging? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> you guys are such children. What I love about this though is it's like, because of the bigger card, it's centered. I won't even be able to see it because remember, that's the GPU side right there. I've got two fans blowing directly on this GPU. So in this little, this little chassis, there should be absolutely zero thermal throttleage. And this is actually the one time EVGA's backwards like plugs actually worked out to my favor because of the way that these are. I can now see what shows through the damage that I've created on this side, which will be neat. Cause look, it's all heat sinky looking. So if I were to put some red LEDs over here, that glow and glitter, like it'll look like fire damage, which I, that's one of the things I loved about the, the other Star Wars build that we did is that that's what really sold it was the, the RGB effect. All right, so now that I can see everything on this card clears our extremities. So this can come up the top, that's perfectly fine. Oh, I don't wanna chop those cables off right now. Uh-oh. <laughs> Wait. Oh, that sucks. What did you do? <laughs> the zip tie like barbed itself. It was like, cause it's like a lip. So the zip tie is like. <laughs> oh, no. So the way that I have these fans attached is I have these zip ties that are just, a zip tie went through and I went zzz, and then I cut it and it's just holding it on. That kind of like barbed itself. You can see I actually scratched the card right here. That actually barbed itself here and here. So it went <laughs> like right where these stick out. I'm not gonna grind this card at all, but I'm thinking what I might actually do is remove those zip ties right there. And then I'll use the long screws that came with the, remember the video we did where we showed the shroud? We made this guy right here. Um, I'm thinking I might just use these guys. Nut and bolt through it. And then that'll look somewhat mechanical on the outside. And then I don't have to worry about hitting that. The way I got it off was I undid the screws that I attached a card to the bracket so I could actually push it in some and then it slid right out. So I, and, and based on the fact that the scratch that's on there is so light, I feel like it's not even a millimeter worth of clearance that I needed. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna cut off one of those zip ties real quick. And then I'm gonna see how much, uh, if these, if these screws will work right here. I just need the fans to stay on. I don't need them to like be like super attached. You know what I mean? So this is the side I always had the big hole on, but the nice thing is with the way I made these panels is I can't switch the side that they're on. Cause they have like these indexing tabs and all I did was cut them off. And now we just use the little ball nubbins to get it to stay. But what you'll see here is any RGB lighting, fan wires that are plugged in. You'll see the tubes. And then on this side with the graphics card. There. So you can't even see the GPU at all in there. <laughs> <laughs> that was a clean, clean through shot right there. <laughs> That's why the ship's still going. Didn't hit anything vital on the inside. All this disconnected was their Wi-Fi. Now they can't play Star Citizen. All right, so no interference. That's good. Now, where should I put the power button? What if I were to put it down at the bottom, like right there. Cause I can't put it here. Cause then we're going to hit the graphics card or whatever. So I can't do that. All right. So we've decided right here will work. Um, this button is so big and unnecessary though. This is when I really wish Radio Shack still existed. <laughs> you can just run down and get a little button. I wonder if I have anything we can steal button from that's smaller than this. I don't need this depth. And this one's also designed to have power, um, not a reset, but just power and hard drive light as well as power light. I won't be wiring up any of the lights or whatever on this, just the button aspect of it. So it'll be sticking like way in there, but I guess it's not a problem. Wait, oh, well, depth wise, I need to make sure I'm not gonna clear impact with the radiator right here. I just thought about that. So this void <laughs> really fills up quickly once you put the AIO back in there. Also too, because this has this part that rises right here, which I, I think that's just a NVMe slot on there. Anyway, it makes a really tight fit for these tubes right here. Let's check this out. It's ugh, it like barely clears in there. It's squishing slightly right there. 
but it doesn't, like it's not pinching the tube shut or anything. And I'm not too concerned about that because I can still, see, I can still move the tube. So it means it's not being pinched. But as you can see now, that spot where I would have put the switch right there, that would have been an obvious problem. And what's an obvious problem right now is the fact that I am quickly running out of anywhere to put this stupid switch. I'm not gonna use that 3080 Ti card because it was scratching the shroud. I'm probably gonna end up just using a Founders Edition card or something. I mean, ultimately, I, it doesn't need to be anything super crazy in this build for, you know, realistic sense. So without putting the main shroud on, I, and I can kind of see now where all the openings and stuff are. You can see on this side, there's just nothing to play with over here. <laughs> it's just so tiny in there. But it gives me room to put a button on this side if I need to. One of the places I'd considered was down here the entire time and that's open. I mean, that would work there. It would only be a little bit deeper than the rail is. All right, so the button's gonna go right here. Technically, it's gonna be the back of the computer. I want this to be more the front, the more focal point of this big blown hole in here, and I still have to melt these. And It'll look more realistic, I promise, when it's all done. This is like the 3D model that has no textures on it yet. Um, but right here, so the power button's gonna go, so it'll go to just the right of this heat sink right here, about where I have that divot already in there. I mean, even if it's in the back part of the PC, like this, because I want that to be the front, it's not like it's gonna be hard to go. Small. Okay, that's satisfying. The question is now, does it clear? <laughs> Did I eyeball measure appropriately? Hey, Look at that. Nice, it's slightly recessed, which is good once I paint this. And this is a metal button, so I could really do some nice weathering effects to this. Turn it on the computer. Harder. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that was just a fun little video for the day. Um, that means I now have pretty much everything I need in order to be able to do the airbrushing, which I really want to do this week. I, I really want to try and get to it this week. If not next week, for absolute sure. I've looked at this in its, in its 3D model form long enough. I need to see it come to life. I need to see the blaster damage and the melt effect looking real here. I need the weathering effects, the words kind of printed on here, the caution striping, the melting of these wires and making this come to life. Um, I can't wait. That's, that's, the, that's literally the whole reason why I did this build. I just had to spend a lot of hours. There's a lot of hours in this already so far. I don't even know how many, but a lot. So there we go. It's unfortunate about DreamHack, but you know what? At least we'll have the counterpart to our Imperial build. We'll have our Rebel build. And there'll be a day. There'll be a day that where I can use this at a LAN party once again. It just sucks that DreamHack finally came to Anaheim. I got to go once. Cancel in 2021 for obvious reasons and already cancel in 2022. Doesn't mean they might not come later in 22, but you know, good on them. They're, they're concerned. And uh, I'd much rather go and have a good experience and have everything just be kind of like, I don't know, just super controlled and locked down. You know, I want to have freedom of movement and, and have some fun at these events. So anyway, there you go, guys. Thanks for watching. And as always, we'll see you tomorrow.